What's up, gamers? I'm John, and this is my Level Up News, where I bring you news every weekday. It's the top news I gather from around the web, so you don't have to. Today is Tuesday, June 11th, 2024. Let's get you leveled up with today's news. For decades, first-person exclusives have defined console identities and driven system sales for PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo. Iconic characters like Super Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Master Chief are closely tied to their brands. Recently, titles like The Last of Us and Horizon Forbidden West have become multi-platform. At the Xbox Game Showcase, Microsoft revealed new games like Gears of War and Fable for PC and Xbox, and announced that Doom The Dark Ages and Call of Duty Black Ops 6 will also be coming to PlayStation. This shift has led to Xbox Chief Phil Spencer criticizing Sony's approach while prompting player choice. Sony 2 has started releasing some exclusives on PC. Despite these changes, their hope that the unique identities of console-specific franchises remains intact. What do you think about the shift in console exclusivities? Share your thoughts in the comments down below. Following the reveal of Call of Duty Black Ops 6, Triarch's Yale Miller discussed the campaign link and its launch on Xbox Game Pass. The campaign will be as long as a typical Call of Duty game, around 4-6 to six hours. Black Ops 6 aims to offer a variety with heist missions, puzzle solving, stealth, and big military incursions, giving players more freedom and exploration opportunities. Developed over 4 years and using a unified engine, this game marks several firsts for the series. Miller noted that launching on Game Pass could help reach a wider audience, prompting Triarch to improve onboarding for new players. Black Ops 6 launches on October 25th for Xbox, PlayStation, and PC with a multiplayer beta available before launch. Are you excited for Black Ops 6? What are your thoughts and what are you looking most forward to? Gamers now expect most AAA titles to be available on either consoles or PC, but this year's Worldwide Developers Conference signaled Apple's increase on focusing gaming by bringing major titles to Mac. As a highlight, Ubisoft announced that Assassin's Creed Shadows will release on Mac on November 15th, the same day it hits PC and consoles. Ubisoft producer emphasized the opportunity to expand gaming within the Apple ecosystem, leveraging Metal and Apple Silicon integrations. Apple's new Game Porting Toolkit 2 will enable developers to bring more advanced games to Mac with better Windows capability. Besides Assassin's Creed Shadows, other conformed titles for Mac include Control Ultimate Edition, Dead Island 2, Frostpunk 2, Pow World, Prince of Persia The Lost Crown, Resident Evil Biohazard, Resident Evil 2, Raven, Robocop Rogue City, Sniper Elite 4, Velham, World of Warcraft The World Within, and Weathering Waves. If the toolkit proves effective, many other titles could soon join this list. On March 20th, 2006, Oblivion captivated gamers with its exceptional world building, but controversy soon followed when Bethesda released premium horse armor as micro DLC, sparking outrage. Over the years, titles like Skyrim and Fallout 4 seemed to show a retreat from such practices, but MMOs like Fallout 76 and Elder Scrolls Online, along with overpriced Creation Club content, indicated otherwise. Recently, during the Xbox Game Showcase, Bethesda unveiled new Starfield content, including the Shattered Space DLC and a free update that began a new questline, but required players to pay $10 for the second part, causing further backlash. Gamers accused Bethesda of scamming players by encouraging unnecessary spending, leading to review bombing on Steam and deepening player disappointment over the company's monetization. What do you think? Do you, do you agree with the backlash or are you seeing it differently? A new Doom game has been rumored for a while, but at Summer Games Fest, ID Software and Bethesda formally unveiled Doom The Dark Ages, the follow-up to 2019's Doom Eternal. Set in the distant past, Doom Slayer is a kingdom's last hope against the hordes of hell. The game introduces melee weapons and dragon riding experiences, drawing inspirations from Doom 1 and Doom 2. Directors Hugo Martin and Marty Strayton emphasize the influence of the original games, incorporating slower moving projectiles and grounding combat. They also cited King Leonidas from 300 and Aragorn from The Lord of the Rings as inspirations for the Doomslayer, 
aiming to convey power and skill. Doom The Dark Ages will release on Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, and PC in 2025. Are you excited for this new direction in the Doom series? Share your thoughts down below. The Salvation's Edge raid in Destiny 2 became the longest raid in the game's history, but it also highlighted Titans as being dead weight throughout the whole raid. A Reddit thread on June 10th emphasized that Titans need a buff to remain impactful while retaining their identity of melee combat. The player pointed out that Titans can no longer spam shoulder melees for mobility, lack proper synergy with glaives, and have seen their melee focus exotics severely nerfed. Titans also have limited range options apart from the Thunder Clash and the new Twilight Arsenal Supers. The post questions why Titans haven't received buffs like Celestial Haunters. Despite new additions like the Void Twilight Arsenal Special and increased damage resistance for Thunderclap, many popular Titan playstyles requiring close combat have been nerfed. While previewing Bounty Stars and Flock, reviewers were surprised by the announcement of Mixtape during the Xbox Game Showcase 2024, which is also coming to Game Pass. Bounty Star is a third-person mech-based action game with farming and life sim elements, and it felt promising despite needing more polish. Flock is a light-hearted adventure centered around identifying and collecting creatures, releasing on July 16, 2024. Mixtape, a nostalgic coming-of-age narrative adventure, stood out with its captivating art style and soundtrack, aiming for a 2025 release. Annapurna Interactive continues to support Xbox Game Pass with creative titles, and many can't wait to see these games in their final forms. What are your thoughts on these upcoming indie games? Share your excitement in the comments down below. Ubisoft's X Defiant is introducing the highly requested Team Deathmatch mode in a couple of weeks, adding new variety to the game's playlist. Executive producer Mark Rubin confirmed the addition in an interview with IGN on June 10th. As X Defiant's preseason continues, players have voiced frustration over the sniper dominated meta on Reddit. The new game mode will allow players to diversify their strategies and rethink loadouts, potentially shifting to the balance of power on the maps. Developers are committed to an exclusive experience by removing skill based matchmaking, ensuring a level playing field for all players. X Defiant Season 1, launching on July 2nd, will feature a new faction, three weapons, a ranked mode, and new maps every month. The IGN interview also teased maps from Ubisoft's non shooter games adding to the excitement. Are you looking forward to the new Team Deathmatch mode? Comment down below. Diablo 4 players are praising Blizzard for skipping the Early Access Pass for Vessel of Hatred, the game's first big DLC expansion after concerns about repeating the money-grabbing strategy seen at launch. When Diablo 4 initially released, only those with a Digital Deluxe Edition or higher got 4 days of Early Access, causing backlash. For Vessel of Hatred, pre-order rewards include pets, platinum, and cosmetics, ensuring everyone starts equally on October 8th. Players can choose from standard, deluxe, and ultimate editions without early access perks. The Coalition is taking back fans to the origins of Gears of War with Gears of War E-Day, revisiting the horrors of Emergence Day and the Locust Horde. The brand director and the creative director of the game discussed the studio's focus on the scary aspects of Gears aiming to capture a moment in time and tell an intimate horror-inspired story. They want to invoke the terror players felt in earlier games using new technology like the Unreal Engine 5 engines to enhance the visual fidelity of the Locuses. Eden explores Marcus and Dom's relationship and the terrifying emergence of the Locust Horde over a few days. The decision to focus on e -Day stems from a desire to revisit and emphasize the series' horror roots. The first footage shown during the Xbox Game Showcase promised a return to these roots and featured the return of Dom Santiago, making it an emotional journey. Gears of War e -Day is currently without a release date. What are your thoughts on this return to the series' origins? And with that bundle of gaming news, I hope you got enough experience points to level up your gaming knowledge today. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that little bell notification so you don't miss any new videos coming out.